All right, guys, so we're going to break down bioenergetics today. We're going to talk about glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. We're basically going to break this down all the way from eating a donut to actually running and using that energy. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So you just ate a donut, and now you want to go for a run and use energy. That's what we're explaining right here. So we just ate a donut and we digested it. It went through the stomach, into the small intestines, and it grinded up into these little small pieces, and then those went into the bloodstream. Those little tiny pieces of donut, guys, that's what we call glucose. So when we go over here into the process of glycolysis, I want you to just think of little tiny bits of donut. So that little tiny piece of donut, guys, this is what it looks like under the microscope. It's just a six carbon molecule. It actually kind of makes a circle, but don't worry about it. It's just a six carbon molecule. Again, it's a, just a little tiny piece of donut. Now, science, guys, it tells you exactly what it's doing. Glycolysis is glycolysis. Lysis meaning cutting. So we're basically just cutting a glucose molecule in half. So we have a six carbon molecule here. We're just basically cutting it into two three carbon molecules. So that's the whole process of glycolysis. There are some individual steps, but this is the big picture. We have that six carbon molecule, we're breaking it down into two three carbon molecules. We call that three carbon molecule a pyruvate molecule. So that pyruvate molecule, if it's anaerobic, is gonna turn into lactate. That would be the end product of anaerobic glycolysis. You would just go from the same thing from glucose to pyruvate and then if you didn't have oxygen you would end up with lactate now if we do have oxygen that's when we're going to continue on to the krebs cycle and one other thing to point out guys the rate limiting enzyme so enzyme is basically something that makes something go faster the rate limiting enzyme for glycolysis is pfk which stands for phosphofructokinase it's basically the thing that limits the speed of glycolysis. So the more phosphofructokinase you have from training and whatnot, if that's upregulated, you can do glycolysis faster, which means that you can make more of this product to then create more energy, basically. So glycolysis gets you to net ATP. The way, reason we say net is because it actually costs two ATP to make four ATP, but you get two net ATP, basically. All right, again, this is out in the cytoplasm of the cell. Basically, that's, that just means it doesn't need oxygen. The Krebs cycle is in the mitochondria of the cell. It requires oxygen. You have to have oxygen to be able to do the Krebs cycle. If you don't, you're going to do the lactate cycle, and it's anaerobic. This is aerobic. Again, this is another uh, basically catabolic process, breaking down a molecule. So we're breaking down a pyruvate molecule. So that pyruvate was the end product of glycolysis and now we're going to break it down through the Krebs cycle. So the first step of breaking this pyruvate down is turning it into this two carbon. So this three carbon structure, one of these high energy bonds breaks, a carbon is detached. Where does that carbon go? Well, we have oxygen. Remember, we're in the mitochondria. It's oxygen rich. One of those oxygen molecules is going to attach to the carbon dioxide. That oxygen is going to attach to the carbon and it's going to make a carbon dioxide molecule. That carbon dioxide molecule can then leave the cell, go back through the bloodstream, and then be expired through the lungs. We're also going to get an NADH out of this step. At that point, whenever you went from a three carbon, now you're left with a two carbon. That two carbon we call acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is the name of that two carbon molecule right here. This is when we actually enter the, cit the cyclical part of the Krebs cycle. So the Krebs cycle from acetyl-CoA, we're gonna go to citric acid. And this is a really important step, guys. Acetyl-CoA is a two carbon, oxaloacetate's a four carbon, they're gonna to come together and make a six carbon citric acid. From that citric acid, we're gonna go through the rest of the cycle and basically give a bunch of these molecules energy and they're gonna then be phosphorylated in the next step. But the rest of the cycle, guys, we're getting rid of two CO2s, and then the rest of these steps are just taking something from like NAD plus to an NADH. And we're gonna see why that's kind of important in the next step. From all of the Krebs cycle, guys, we're getting two ATP. Two ATP directly, net ATP. So uh, we also are getting these NADHs and this FADH 
That is what we're going to use in the very last step here, which is what we call oxidative phosphorylation. So, in oxidative phosphorylation, the whole point of this step, guys, it's just oxidizing all of these molecules that we made in the other steps. So in the, in the Krebs cycle, we made four NADHs. Again, that was per pyruvate. So you actually multiply that four by two, so you get eight. We also had two NADHs from glycolysis. That gives us a total of 10 NADHs. If we multiply those by three ATP per NADH, we get 30 ATP. And this is really the majority of the energy we get from the whole process is right here in oxidative phosphorylation. That FADH is gonna give us two ATP. And again, we had one of those per cycle. You had two cycles because you had two pyruvates. So that would get us two FADHs and that would get us four ATP. So just from oxidative phosphorylation, we're getting 34 ATP. But if you account for the two from the Krebs cycle, the two from glycolysis, we get a total of 38 ATP from the whole process. So one glucose molecule broken all the way down through all the steps, again, within the presence of oxygen, gives you a total of 38 ATP net. All right, one thing I wanna add here, guys, is at this step, this is a little bit different. This is different than a glucose molecule because again, glucose molecule, we had a donut um, that came from like a carbohydrate, like a sugar. We can also uh, get energy from fats. That process is, it starts with uh, beta oxidation and it's kind of independent of this, but once a fat breaks down, a fat's a big, big carbon chain. It has a glyceride backbone and, and fatty acid chains on it. Once that breaks down and the fatty acid chains are broken down into two carbon molecules, they'll actually enter the Krebs cycle right here as acetyl-CoA. So that's an option. Um, one other thing I wanted to cover is this is technically with glucose, so we say it's all carbohydrate, but there is a process called gluconeogenesis. It basically means making new glucose, gluconeogenesis, creating new glucose. So through that process of gluconeogenesis, you can have amino acids, you can have lactate, you can have pyruvate, you can have all of these things kind of going in reverse and going back to glucose, and then they can go through this process. So in general, this process is for like carbohydrates, but again, there's kind of that indirect method that other molecules can end up as glucose and then go through the process. All right, guys, so if this helped you understand bioenergetics, go ahead and hit the like button. It helps other people find this video instead of all the boring ones that are out there. So also, if you want to learn more about this and exercise science and movement science in general, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I'll teach you more things in the next one. All right, thanks.